Hello everybody and thank you for watching this behind the scenes video on my short action scene. This is going to be a tutorial on how I did uh, some muzzle flashes and some uh, gun effects. So uh, we're going to start out, here's our clip, just one of the clips from the, uh, the scene. And we're going to start out by selecting which one we want to add the effect to. After your final edit is complete, we're going to do this. We're going to go through where the effect starts. It's going to be right in here. We're going to go back just a few frames, and we're actually going to cut this clip. And the reason for that is we want to have the smallest project we possibly can. We don't want to have all of this extra data taking up room. Now, it's not that big. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, it wouldn't take that much uh, extra computing power. However, it's a good habit to get into only adding effects where you need them. So we're going to select. We're going to right click. We're going to hit replace with After Effects Composition. What this is going to do is it's going to dynamic link it to Adobe After Effects and allow us to edit. It's going to allow us to edit in Adobe After Effects and have it link and show up here. So anything we do inside After Effects is going to render out here and we're not going to have to render out a separate video and then import it back in and lose quality. So uh, the first thing we got to do is get uh, some of our stuff together. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Okay have it stored on my external hard drive. Which one is it? Okay, uh, this is just some stuff that I created in a blender. Okay, and uh, some of these are found on the internet. I'm not going to be using them because of legal reasons. I don't want to mess with it. Uh, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using ones that I created myself, uh, which I created this one, uh, and we're actually we're not even going to see them. Are we going to see them? Do we need to import those? Nope. Okay. So uh, we just need that, and I'm going to also import uh, some action essentials into here. Okay. So I found what I wanted. Uh, we're going to be using Wisp 01, and we're going to be using some of the other stuff that I created. Okay. So first thing we need to do. We need to find where the effect happens. So we're going to go ahead and play this. Okay, I'm not sure why. There we go. Uh, if you have caps lock on, it doesn't allow you to scrub through. So you can see, pull the trigger. So right there, we want a shot to happen. Okay. So to do this first, we need to think what do we want to have happen? Uh, what style are we going for? And you can go for multiple different styles. You can go the big muzzle flash that casts a lot of light. Uh, I don't prefer doing the light because I think it looks fake because that's not how it happens in real life. Yes, you can see them, but it's not that bright. It won't cast that much light. However, because we are up close, we may want to add it just to, because you can't actually see the muzzle flash. You may want to add it, maybe a bit of light coming from there. But first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start adding the uh, bullet in, and that will help a little bit. So we're going to take the bullet. We're just going to drop it on. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> uh, this one has alpha already on. And we're going to go ahead, and we are going to just mirror that because if you see how it spins, we have the extractor on this side, which will be kicking the bullet, and it's going to be pulling on this edge and flipping it like that. It's going to be going clockwise. So we have it spinning clockwise. Okay, so now we're going to go up right where it fires. We're going to rotate it so that way it starts lined up. We're going to hit W. We're going to rotate it. We're going to hit V. And we're going to scale it down by holding Shift. Otherwise, it won't keep the perspective. So make it about the right or the correct size. Right about there. Now trim it by hitting alt bracket in now we're also going to hit time and we're going to hit time stretch and we're going to make it 20 percent so it's a lot faster boom we can even go faster we can go 10 percent there we go it's going to start here i'm actually going to take it up yeah that's good i guess uh, we're going to start there and we're also going to hit p on the keyboard and what that's going to do is going to put or bring up position we're going to click the stopwatch so we can set keyframes. We're going to go 
hit page down to go frame by frame, page up to go frame by frame. So that's page down, page up. Uh, hit page down four or five times, depending on how how fast you want this to go. I'm going to go about five and see what that looks like. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to click and drag, and that's going to create another keyframe. As you can see, we're creating keyframes here. So this keyframe right here is that position. This is that position. I try to keep just one keyframe. So for position one, position two. And then what we can do is we can grab these handles here, and we can change the curve. Okay, if you create more than one keyframe, this does not work very well. So, if you like that, we could actually just have it shoot straight up. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Pretty good. We're going to go here. We're going to trim it so we're not rendering any more than we need. And we're going to hit motion blur. You may notice nothing's happening because you have to enable it in the comp. So, hit motion blur, enable motion blur, and you can see looking good. If that's too much motion blur, we can go composition settings by right clicking, advanced, and change the shutter angle to about uh, the 60. So now you can see it's a bit clearer. Boom, perfect. Looking great. Close ups always look better with bullets flying. Okay. I actually thought that the um, shutter angle for before looked better, so I'm actually just going to bring it up to 120. It's going to be a bit blurrier, but yeah, we can still kind of see what's going on. Perfect. Okay, now what's missing? Well, uh, this is actually an airsoft gun where the dust cover is just molded in. So on a real uh, M16, what would happen is the dust cover would fly open and it would expose the bolt. However, uh, that would require motion tracking this and then animating that down, which we could do. However, it doesn't happen in any of the other shots because we can't do that. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it closed. One of those things that if I had better prop, it would look better. However, I don't. So we do what we got to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, duplicate this layer by hitting Control D, Alt, bracket in, move a few keyframes, or we can do it a different way. I'm actually going to do a different one. It's going to be easier. Layer, new, solid. Okay. Take that make it a bit darker maybe change color a little bit something like a, uh, a really dark blue there just so it stands out a bit better and we're going to make the width uh, let's go 500 by 500 because we don't need a whole lot because it's just going to be positioned here we're going to hit t to bring up the opacity and we're going to drop the opacity so we can see what we're doing trim this layer drop it below the bullet so that way it appears below okay position wherever you want. We're going to go ahead and hit P to bring up, oh, excuse me, G to bring up the pen tool. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a mask. So uh, we're going to go one keyframe. It's going to be all the way open. So we're going to go ahead. Okay. There we go adjust the handles to where it looks good. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, looking great. Now if we go ahead and hit T, bring it up. It's dark. Okay, so we're going to go one more frame. Oh, go if we don't do this, uh, hit M and now hit mask path. We're going to make a keyframe for this and what this is going to do is going to allow us to animate our mask so that way we can have it appear in, and uh, disappear. So we're going to go one frame. We're going to hit V and that will allow us to grab these points. We're going to move it in. About here it looks good. And because she's firing this in semi-auto uh, it will look pretty good. We can actually go slower. If you're following full, firing full auto, you want to make this a bit faster because you want to be able to have it uh, open and close. And this particular style will fire about one every other frame is what looks pretty good. Uh, so you want to have the frame that on the fire is all the way open. The next frame is about here to where you can just see that little bit. 
So about half of this, and then the next frame would be full again, and it'd kind of go like that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna trim the comp here, or the uh, not the comp, the layer. Excuse me. Let's bring that all the way back. Let's watch. T forgot to increase the opacity again. All the way up. And you can see it's looking kind of weird. You may ask yourself, why is that? Well, uh, one, let's try on motion blur for it. Doesn't really change much. So we're gonna uh, turn off motion blur because it doesn't do anything, it's just rendering out. So we're gonna hit M twice. And we're gonna go and we're gonna increase the mask feather just a little bit. Uh, I got eight pixels here. Okay, and it's a bit too blue. So we're gonna go ahead and go to channel, excuse me, color correction. And we're going to curves, and we're going to go to the blue, and we're going to drop the blues a little bit. Just just ever so slightly. Okay. That's a bit too green, and we're going to drop the green. Ever so slightly. Okay, and we're also going to decrease the brightness on it. Let's add one more frame. So I can erase the frame. We're going to hit M. And we're going to extend this to here. And we're going to move these down even further. Okay, and we're going to move these up just to rematch it. Okay, make sure everything lines up. Maybe bring this keyframe here. Readjust it. It's all about little little fine details. Okay, looks like our mask feathers a bit too much, so we're gonna go four. Looking a bit better. On this one, I'm actually gonna get rid of that hard or that curve because it wouldn't have a curve like that on that side. pretty good let's try that and it's gonna look better once we compound and add more there we go looking good Ooh, fire another one okay so we're gonna duplicate the bullet You want to be under the bullets, but over the uh, covers or under the animated bolt. So uh, let's find Wisp. We're going to have to increase the speed, time, time stretch. Uh, let's try 10%. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's RAM preview that. I'm going to save first. RAM preview to see how fast it looks. Intense. Okay. Looking pretty good. It's real time. Okay. We're going to cut off the first frame here. We're going to hit W to rotate it. V to position it. W rotate it again. Now we're just going to go ahead and hit G, and we're going to do a slight track. We're going to hit G again to bring up the feather tool. We're going to add a feather and just remove the feather from the side, so kind of taper the feather a bit. Okay, and what that's going to do is wherever this line is, it's going to stop. So let's preview that. 
How much does the camera move? The camera moves a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's track uh, at the base layer so we can go ahead and get that ready to go. And we're going to track motion. And we're just not going to track uh, rotation. We're just going to track position and just make a track point, track forward. Quick and dirty track. We don't need it to be super accurate. Perfect. Uh, control Shift Alt Y. Make a new null layer. Edit target. Null one. Okay. Apply. Enter. Boom. That's just super quick track. So if you guys want a detailed tutorial on that, Google it. Take Wisp. Parent her over. Let's also animate this mask path. Move it out a bit. Make it a bit wider. Just open it up. Okay, let's go ahead and watch it. That's a lot. I personally think it adds a whole lot. Okay, now let's go T. And we're going to adjust the opacity on this just a little bit, make it a little more subtle. But more like real smoke. And we can also go layer. Okay, select it. Effect, color correction, curves. Yet again, adjust the color of the smoke. Let's go alpha channel. We can change the alpha. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to bring in a uh, muzzle flash, one that I created. Inside of the blender, we're going to grab it. We're going to hit F4. Hit Add. Move it over here. We're also going to add a glow. Boom. Bracket and bracket out. Make one frame long. We're going to increase the glow radius, intensity. Bit. There we go. This is going to look really nice. Okay, now we're just going to duplicate that and we're just going to add it to every single one. We can rotate it a little bit, make it not the same. Now for the next one, we're going to go layer, new solid. We're going to make it kind of a whitish yellowish. Uh, make it a bit yellower. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're just going to scale this puppy up. Okay, we're going to hit T. And we're going to drop the opacity. Make it two frames long. We'll see why in a second. Uh, we're going to hit G and we're going to mask out a little bit where we want the. Uh... Okay, and increase the opacity ever so slightly. Turn to add and M. Select all the masks. Okay, and we're going to feather them. Okay, Let's see what that looks like. Okay, the one the face is looking a little weird. Okay, and we're also going to add uh, curves again. Curves is your universal thing. You want curves on pretty much everything. So, let's go red. 
Uh, increase the out, uh, increase the alpha a little bit. We can change it up. Without width, without width, look at better. Okay, and we're gonna animate the opacity. So we're gonna set keyframe max intensity, and move over two frames to where it drops to zero. Okay, and we could probably just duplicate this and reuse it. There, subtle. Looking really good. Okay, uh, now I'm also going to bring in some smoke for here. Okay, good enough. Time, time stretch, 20%. Actually, let's increase the time a bit more and go 10%. the opacity and then that one let's watch it and a lot of layers here so let's uh, select this bottom one so we're not uh, focusing on anything and just hit play perfect shot is now done thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial and if you want to see some more uh, let me know and i will do it uh, thank you so much for watching see you later